All right, so uh, we move on to uh, chapter one, which is defining apologetics. So if we're going to talk about it, where do we always want to start? Uh, the, uh, hopefully the show has, uh, has, has uh, asked the, the questions of uh, by what standard and also by what definition is, uh, sh should, should be made on T-shirts for us. So, uh, <laughs> But here, apologetics may be simply defined as the defense of Christian faith. Well, okay, that's, that's pretty simple, but there's got to be more to it, right? Well, the simplicity of this definition, however, masks the complexity of the problem of defining apologetics. Oh, great, now we have a problem of evil. Now we have a, a problem of defining apologetics. So. <laughs> Where do we stop? All right. Well, it turns out that the, the that the diversity of approaches has been taken uh, to defining the meaning, scope, and purposes, uh, or the, the the purpose actually of apologetics. And so we go from apologia to apologetics. And here, the definition, the word apologetics, is derived from the Greek word apologia, which uh, was originally used as a, 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 a speech or a defense of or an answer given in a reply. And in ancient Athens, it's referred to as defense made in courtroom as part of the normal judicious, uh, judicial procedure. This, this is you're on trial and you have to give a defense for uh, the, the, the reason why you did something or the reason why you shouldn't be found guilty of, of this crime. And so um, I, I don't know if they, they had burden of proof uh, um, uh, issues uh, that our court does, uh, but, uh, but you, have, you, you stand before the court of Caesar and uh, you, you must give a, 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 an apologetic for, uh, for why you did or didn't do the thing that you are accused of. Right. And so what they're going to do here in this defining section is just go through a bunch of terms here. Uh, so that we're all on the same page as we talk about these particular issues. They're going to define them in terms of how they want us to understand these various terms and also pull out uh, the, under, uh, the meaning of these terms from history as well as from their usage uh, even today. Right? So apologetics is the first one. Um, this word, they tell us, uh, appears 17 times in noun or verb form in the New Testament, and both the noun form, apologia, and the verb form, Allah uh, Nomai has um, uh, can be translated defense or vindication in every case that it's used, all 17 cases in the New Testament. So the New Testament, however, does not use the words apologia and apology um, in the technical sense of the modern word apologetics. Right? It was apparently not until they tell us 1794 that apologetics was used to designate a specific theological discipline. And there has been a debate about the place of this discipline in Christian thought almost from the very beginning when this uh, notion was introduced. This debate continues throughout the 20th century and, and today. And so in this chapter, what we'll see here is they will refer to definitions of the apologetics word group and consider just how best to conceive of the discipline of apologetics. So this chapter gives these various definitions, and in giving these definitions, it helps us to understand exactly uh, what the discipline of apologetics is all about. Right, which is definitely important because uh, there might be uh, distinctions then between what we mean versus what scripture means, and we definitely want to uh, purse our our, our uh, conflation very very uh, distinctly uh, when when we do that. Okay, uh, apologetics in related terms is the section that we move to next, and it's been customary to use the term apology to refer to a specific effort or work in defense of the faith. An apology might be a written down document, a speech, or even a film. Any medium of communication might conceivably be used. An apologist is someone who presents an apology or makes a practice of defending the faith. And so, um, you know, I always think of, you know, apologize to your sister, apologize to your brother when you do this. It's like, well, give a reason for why you 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 hit them. Like, well, no, that's not what that's not what we're doing. So, <laughs> so we, we want to make sure that we're not uh, we're not conflating that idea of of kind of the modern day use of what we mean by apology. But here, it's 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 kind of the the document, the, the written down uh, communication that we give. And then the apologist is the person that that does the giving of it, even even the presentation of of whatever it is in written form or in uh, documentary purposes. All right. So apology has to do with defense of the faith. The apologist is the person who is giving the defense, the apology. Right. 
Uh, the terms apologetic and apologetics are closely related, they tell us, and can be used synonymously. Uh, here, for clarity's sake, though, they're going to suggest that one way of useful distinguishing these terms that corresponds to the way that they're often actually used. And so here's how they want us to kind of distinguish these terms of apologetic and apologetics. Okay? Uh, so the an apologetic, using the word as a noun, will here be defined as a particular approach to the defense of the faith. Thus, you know, we might hear someone talk about Francis Schaeffer's apologetic. So that's his approach to defending. Right, right. So that, that's the, the noun version. Apologetics, on the other hand, has been used in at least three ways. Perhaps most commonly, it refers to the discipline concerned with the defense of the faith. And second, it can refer to the general grouping or approaches or systems developed by defending the faith as we speak about evidentialist apologetics or reformed apologetics. So there's the, the distinction between them. And third, it's sometimes used to refer to the practice of defending the faith as the activity of presenting an apology or apologies in defense of the faith. And so these three usages are easily distinguished by the context. Guess what? Context even matters. Uh, uh, when we talk about uh, apologetics outside <laughs> of scripture there. That's so, right. so apologetics is, or context is king. Yes. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> and so all three of them will be uh, employed in, in, in this book. Right, all right. So now we got the distinction here. Apology is giving a defense. The apologist is a person that gives the defense. Apologetics then is a particular approach to the defense. And apologetics with an S uh, is uh, has been used in the three ways that, that you've outlined. And they say that, that, that you will be able to distinguish those three ways by the context. Finally, meta-apologetics, they tell us, refers to the study of the nature and method of apologetics. Uh, this term has come into usage only recently, and uh, they suggest is still rarely used, right? So it focuses on the principal fundamental questions that must be answered properly if the practice of apologetics is to be uh, securely grounded and true. And so a meta-apologetic may then be defined as a particular theory meta-apologetics, such as Cornelius Van Til's reform meta-apologetic, or perhaps Norm Geisler's neo-Thomistic meta-apologetic. So that's the idea here. 